Hello guys. I'm going to do two little experiments here. One has nothing to do with the other. My kids rejected my offer to go out to the drive-in movies tonight, so I have taken it upon myself to take all this uh, energy and put it into making videos today and making stuff. So anyway, first video has to do with texture paste and foil so you guys have probably seen my video on foiling and all the things you can do with it if not i'll link it at the end here um, but if you have not bought or seen the deco foil gel this is almost the exact same stuff so you can take texture paste transparent gloss run it through a stencil which i have done here and foil will stick to it once it's dry. So I know you guys can't see anything. This is just a scrap piece of paper. But right here, you can see a little tree. This is the tree stencil I used. And I put some of that through there and I let it dry. On this side, I got some new material. This is texture paste transparent matte. So the experiment is, is the foil gonna stick to the matte side? I know it will stick to the glossy side. I wanna know if it's gonna stick to the matte side. Um, this way you guys know if you don't have access to the deco foil or don't wanna buy the deco foil, and you already have this on hand, you can use this stuff. So we're gonna, I have a scrap piece of foil here, and this is just a scrap piece of um, Creative Vision stamps foil that I had on my desk, and I'm just gonna put it over both pieces. My mink is on, it is on setting three. And we're going to run that through. Okay, so that's going to be experiment one. Is, te is texture paste transparent matte going to allow the foil to stick just like texture paste transparent gloss? And then you can use foil on all your stencils because we love to foil everything. So that's experiment number one, which we will have an answer to in a second here. And now I hear little steps running down the steps, feet. And then I'll be like, Mom, we want to go to the movies now. And I'm going to say, no, you had your chance. You told me no. All right, so we want to let this cool a second before we remove the foil. I'm going to turn mini mink off and move it out of the way. All right, so I know it's going to stick to the glossy side. Let's see if it sticks. Ta-da! It works! You know what that means. Go get yourself some texture paste. Um, yeah, it looks actually about the same on both. I think this is a little messy over here because I did not clean my stencil off. I just moved it over and used the other embossing paste. But um, I don't see a difference. It's stuck on there. Great. So experiment number one, success. We don't need to buy deco foil transfer gel. We can use texture paste transparent um, texture paste from Ranger. So there you go. Good idea on that. Um, Second experiment, I was watching the lovely and talented Mr. Tim Holtz on, uh, I don't know, one of his channels, and he has now um, come out with ink, ink lifting, alcohol ink lifting, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm just a little curious if we can make our own, because you know me, I can't wait for new stuff to come out, and if I can make it myself and save some money, why not? So, I have my Yupo paper, which is very difficult to find these days, by the way. Um, I picked this pack up at Blick Art Stores, and it's a uh, large 10 sheets. And this is the white, not the vellum. Okay, so I've got a couple pieces of scrap paper here. And what I want to try to do is some alcohol inks here. I'm using my glass mat so that it'll be hopefully easy cleanup. I thought I had another piece of Yupo paper, but now I can't find it. Anyway, moving on. So we're just going to take these two pieces and we are just going to lay some different colors of ink down. This is the fun part about using alcohol ink. Can you guys tell me how the lighting is? Because I feel like it's kind of dark. And I normally turn on the overhead light. 
which is here. But then what happens is there's a glare on the desk here. So I have the light off, but I, if it's too dark, you guys need to let me know so that I can figure out a way to get the lights back on. So we're just dropping ink on our Yupo paper, making it pretty. I think I'll do this one kind of like blues and teals. Did I do that color already? No. Can't do alcohol ink without staining your fingers. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit. There we go. Alcohol ink's all dried on my lids. Got to have muscles to get these things open. Oh, that's pretty. That's called aqua. That's what I'm looking for. Let's get some more of that on there. All right, so what happens is Yupo paper, in case you didn't know, is a synthetic paper. It's made out of plastic photopropylene or something it's called polypropylene it's called but basically it's plastic in paper form so the ink stays on top for a little bit and then if you have a straw here we go you can blow it around and make pretty pools of it and then if you have um, alcohol, which I have 91% isopropyl alcohol, and I also have blending solution. I think some of you already have an idea where I'm going to go with this. Let me put a little more ink on this because I want this whole thing saturated with color. This is called mermaid. Ooh, that's way darker. I want this whole sheet color covered. And this just has alcohol in a spritz thing. So I'm going to spray that on there. Ooh, ooh, fancy. And that'll move some of that color around. At this point, if you wanted to put foil on there, it would stick on there and look pretty cool. Maybe we'll do that in a second. But that's not today's video. On this one, I'm going to do some pinks and purples. This is called Flamingo. It's my favorite color. This one is called Wild Plum. Pretty. Um, pink Sherbert. All right, same thing. I'm gonna spritz that with the regular alcohol. You don't wanna put alcohol blending solution in a spray bottle because you don't want that airborne and breathing it in. So this is just regular alcohol. We'll see how that reacts. You don't really wanna use a heat tool either because it will warp the plastic, the paper. Now, alcohol inks do tend to dry pretty quickly. Um, an easy way to clean them up as well is to use alcohol wipes or a little paper towel with some alcohol on it. So what we want, to, want this to do is to dry because my experiment is going to be... Let me zoom you guys out here. And if I can get my camera straight here. Is um, I'm going to put some alcohol and some blending solution, two little puddles over here on my media mat. And what the experiment is going to be is can we lift that ink with a stamp, I just have a little seahorse stamp here, off of these alcohol ink panels because Tim Holtz was able to do it with his alcohol ink, alcohol lift ink, alcohol, I don't know what you call it. So I want to see if we can do it. And if it works, I don't see why you couldn't take a empty ink pad So, for example, a Tim Holtz blank distress ink pad. When you wanted to try this, 
and put some blending solution in here. I know it will dry out because the nature of the blending solution and the alcohol is to evaporate and dry out. But I'm just saying, if you were only doing it at that moment, then you would do that. So these are now nicely sticky. They're not dry yet. So I'm actually going to very lightly take the heat tool to it from a very far away angle. Heat tool up here, papers down there. most part the alcohol has dried I'm gonna blot some of this excess off because I want to move this along here Ooh, that's kind of neat Okay, so let's move on with the experiment here, which is we're going to take the alcohol, 91% alcohol, and I'm just going to pour a little bit of that on my craft mat. I know it's out of camera. I'm sorry. There is a blob on the craft mat there. I don't know if I can, let's see if I can adjust you guys a little straighter here. All right, so right here, just let me move when in doubt, move the whole mat over. Okay. Right here, there is a blob of alcohol ink. I'm going to take my stamp, dip it in that alcohol ink. Obviously, it's going to be nice and juicy. Just kind of clean up, maybe just dab a little bit off. Now I'm going to stamp that into the blue one here. And we're going to see if it lifts that alcohol ink. Um, yeah. Now, I think because this is so liquidy and gooey, so maybe that's the difference. Maybe with the Tim Holtz stamp pad, it's not that way. Like, it's got a little more body to it. That's how the ink works. I don't know. I'm just trying out an experiment here. This may or may not work for us. All right, now I'm going to try the blending solution. And you know what? What the heck? I'm just going to pour it in this distressing pad because I'm not using it anyway. And worst case is it dries out. So I'm taking the blending solution, dumping that all in here, making my own blending solution ink pad. Same concept. Ooh, that's going to turn colors now because I have blue alcohol ink on here. All right. Now I got fuzzies on the stamp. I just can't win. All right, here we go. The stamp pad is moist. You can feel the solution on there. Ta-da! I would call that a success. My experiments have worked. Okay, so trying it with rubbing alcohol did not work. It just pushed the ink out of the way. I can't get this off the desk. Okay. So all it did there is push the ink out of the way and kind of made like this blobby shadow. So that, I would say, did not work. The rubbing alcohol did not work. Okay. So then we poured some 
alcohol blending solution into this distress blank ink pad and stamped it onto this one and look what it did lifted the ink i'm gonna turn the light on because i just don't think it's coming up look at that isn't that cool so i don't think i need to go out and buy the new ink pad i can make my own yes i think it's gonna dry out and i'll have to probably re-ink it but i think if you're doing this technique once in a blue moon and you don't have the patience to wait for new stuff here you go so use your upo paper your alcohol inks and make your own custom alcohol blending solution ink pad and it can lift you know what let's try it again let's go back to this page let's do it again ah oh, i didn't clean it that's all right it'll dry out and i'll do it again There we go. It lifted that ink right off of there. That is so cool. I mean, you can see the detail down to his little eyeball there. That is so neat. I want to thank Mr. Tim Holtz for his fabulous ideas and products. I am sorry for taking a shortcut and trying to do it my own cheap way because everywhere I've looked online, it's on pre-order. And I don't feel like waiting six weeks when I have all the stuff to do it right here. So I'm wondering if that is um, what he did was just take that solution and somehow I'm going to say put it in some kind of, of a binding solution so that it doesn't dry out like a, a gel or some kind of ink so that it doesn't dry out. And we're just going to wipe this away. This isn't going to hurt anything. It's like a Versamark ink pad. They get all stained up and work great. So now the next experiment needs to be keeping an eye on this and seeing how long before it dries out. I'm, I'm going to imagine it's not going to take very long. It will dry out probably by tomorrow. But I'll put the lid on it and I will keep you guys updated. The image is staying nice and crisp as it's drying. So, um, but it works. So there are my two experiments for today for you guys. Hope you enjoy them. If you have any questions, post them below. Thanks for watching. And of course, keep on stamping and foiling. Bye.